Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Behind me here is my little 7x12 black box cargo trailer. I kind of nicknamed it the black box, but let's take a look at it. It actually works out really good for what I use it for. Being a 7 wide, I can see it behind my truck and camper. Trailers narrower than that are kind of hard to see behind a truck and camper because they're narrower and you basically can't see the sides of the trailer when you're trying to back up. So what I've got going here is a little project. I'm going to add some floodlights to the back above the cargo doors. So really tricky to figure out the right kind of lights to use for this because so many lights have the mounting bracket situated too far forward on the light so that when you swivel that bracket back it doesn't give you the ability to mount the light on a vertical surface. So I knew that the Rigid Industries worked perfect on my last trailer so after giving up trying to look at other options I decided to go this route and it's probably been about 10 years ago that I had upgraded that other trailer. I think I did that in 2011 or 2012 and I thought maybe there's some smaller lights that would work better and because there's a whole lot of different uh, LED lights available on the market but after looking at all the different ones and emailing various companies and ask them for photos of how they're situated with the bracket I just finally gave up and went back to rigid. This particular model is scene lighting so it's just one great big reflector and the LEDs are situated right in the middle of the reflector so it it's kind of like a work area light I guess you could say and the particular set that I bought have amber backlighting I thought that would work really good for using as some ambient lighting and kind of area lighting when I'm camped that way I don't have to turn on the white lights and have a big drain on the battery plus have some big gigantic overpowering lights out camping so I think that amber backlighting will probably work just perfect and my switches here they are single pole double throw so what I'll do here is wire the light to the middle terminal power from my battery into the other terminal and then power from the backlights into the other terminal so three term terminals there that way what I will do is be able to hit the switch one direction and the lights will operate from the backup lights when the truck is in reverse and then I switch the switch the other way and I can manually turn on the lights so what I'll have is one switch for each light because these have a limited current rating and then I'll have a third switch which will be just a basic on off switch to power up the backlighting right up here is where the wiring junction box was mounted I have never put all of that stuff back together because I had intended to do this project um, last year I wired everything the trailer did not come pre-wired for backup lights so what I have here is a relay and I fished a new wire it comes up from the floor down underneath the trailer it uh, goes through the frame rail of the trailer all the way to the trailer plug at the front so when my backup lights engage it on the truck it fires this relay which then will send power I think out the blue wire and then into one of the switches or actually both switches and light up the lights depending on which direction I have the switch pointed will dictate where I'm getting power from either from backup lights or from the battery that little diagram there shows what I'm going so this goes from the trailer battery this goes from terminal 87 on the relay and then the middle terminal on the switch goes to the lights and that is uh, basically what all my different color wires are this is pretty much going to be identical to another project I did on my previous cargo trailer which was 6x12. I will drill two holes here, one for the wiring and one for the bracket. After drilling my mounting hole I've got the light test fit here and you can see that I don't have the bracket all the way up to that bend. I decided to drop it down just a little bit. That will give me a little bit of clearance between the top of the light and the roof line. That way if I decide that I wanted to put it in my garage I can do that. 
but this also gives us a little bit of flexibility as far as mounting. We can have it pointing straight back and it's got a little bit of adjustability up and down to go down below the roof line and then we can also pivot it. Then we can also slide it down in the slots to bring it down even further. And the way I mounted that bracket is with the curved portion facing up like that. So this is going to work out perfect. Next thing I need to do is just drill the hole for the wire. Here's what the lights look like when they're fully installed. I've got two holes, one for the mounting bracket and then one for the wire. You can see that I've drilled a small hole for the wire and then I put some sealant around it. On the inside of the trailer, on the back side of that wire, I also installed some sealant. I positioned the hole for the mounting bracket such that I could get the mounting bracket just a little bit down below this lip. That way I could swivel the light or tilt it this way or that way and kind of give myself a little bit of adjustability for side lighting. If I wanted to tilt it this way, then I would get just a little bit of lighting off to the side of the trailer. It's not much, but it makes a little bit of difference when uh, trying to see for backup lighting. And I have my switches mounted up above the junction box. I mounted them up high because I've got my broom right there. These are a different switch than I originally showed earlier in the video. I found these in a, my collection of stuff. So when the switches are in the down position, the lights are activated by the relay when the truck is in reverse. And when I switch one of the switches or both of them to the up position, then the lights manually turn on. I think it's going to work out good having each light on its own switch. So if, if I'm out camping somewhere, I don't necessarily want to have both lights on if I needed to do some work back here. It's kind of getting dark now and there's not a whole lot of daylight left. So let's take a look at how these lights do. There's my cargo trailer. I've got that opened up. I just wanted to open it up to give a reference as far as how far out the light goes. So I'll set my camera down here. Adjust it so we can see the very end of the ramp. I'll reach inside here and turn on one of these lights. So that is the light on the driver's side. As you can see, the spot where I'm parked is probably about 75 feet from the road out there. And looking off to the side, it kind of gives a nice squared off pattern. That's a function of the scene lighting reflector and the clear lens. So scene lighting works really good on things like emergency vehicles and cargo trailers and heavy equipment. Then that's with the second light on. And then we'll turn off the first light. And then we'll turn them both off and then we'll turn them back on. The amber lights look nice, but they're pretty much useless as far as providing any kind of usable area light when it's totally dark. A better solution if you wanted a less obnoxious light for camping, if you just want to kind of light up the area a little bit and not have white lights, would be to put amber covers on these lights and light them up with the, the main white lighting. With an amber cover and then uh, using the appropriate style dimmer switch, I think you could get these lights dimmed down where they would be pretty nice for uh, lighting up, up a campsite with just general area lighting. I've got a set of the Rigid Industries amber covers that I'll probably try out on these lights at some point in time. And I'll probably do some research on a dimmer switch and wire in the dimmer switch to the battery side of the main switch for a campsite lighting. Be sure to check out all of my other trailer upgrade videos in the playlist in the upper right corner.